Global News would like to greet you and everyone. Today, we will help you update important international events, while bringing multi-dimensional perspectives and deep reflections on current issues. Topic going on in the world. Right now are the main news that will be in the program. Russia warns US against fatal miscalculation in Ukraine. Indian Election Commission backs away concerns in record-breaking ballot count. China maintains stance on disputed Gulf Islands despite Iran's anger. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov said on Monday the United States could face fatal consequences if it ignored Moscow's warnings not to let Ukraine use weapons provided by Washington to strike targets inside Russia. Ryabkov was commenting on President Joe Biden's decision last week to approve the use of U.S.-supplied weapons to hit targets inside Russia that were involved in attacks on Ukraine's Kharkiv region. I would like to warn American leaders against miscalculations that could have fatal consequences. For unknown reasons, they underestimate the seriousness of the rebuff they may receive, state news agency RIA quoted Ryabkov as saying. He referred to comments last week by President Vladimir Putin, who said NATO countries were playing with fire and risking a deeper global conflict, one of a series of warnings from Moscow about the risk of a serious escalation. Putin had delivered a very significant warning, and it must be taken with the utmost seriousness, he added. Putin said the West would be directly involved in any use of its weapons by Ukraine to strike deep inside Russia, because such attacks would require its satellite, intelligence, and military help. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said last week that NATO had the right to help Ukraine uphold its own right to self-defense, and this did not make NATO a party to the conflict. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said at the weekend that Kyiv was grateful to Washington for allowing it to use U.S.-supplied Hamar's rocket systems in the Kharkiv region, but this was not enough. Ukraine has long argued that restrictions on the way it can use Western-supplied weapons are seriously limiting its ability to defend itself. South Korea plans to suspend a military agreement signed with North Korea in 2018 aimed at easing tensions, the presidential office said on Monday, after Seoul warned of a strong response to balloons launched by Pyongyang carrying trash to the south. North Korea has launched hundreds of balloons carried by wind across the border that dropped trash throughout South Korea, which called it a provocation and rejected Pyongyang's claim it was done to inconvenience its neighbor. The National Security Council said it would raise the plan to suspend the entirety of the military agreement for approval by the cabinet at a meeting on Tuesday. Suspending the agreement will pave the way for the South to conduct training near the military border and take sufficient and immediate measures in response to North Korea's provocation, the Council said in a statement. It did not elaborate what those measures may be. The pact, which was the most substantive deal to come out months of historic summit meetings between the two Koreas in 2018, had been all but scrapped when Pyongyang declared last year it was no longer bound by it. Since then, the North deployed troops and weapons at guard posts near the military border. By continuing to comply with the pact, there have been considerable problems in our military's readiness posture, the council said. South Korea has previously said it would take unendurable measures against North Korea for sending the trash balloons over the border, which could include blaring propaganda from loudspeakers positioned at the border directed at the North. North Korea has said the balloons were in retaliation for a propaganda campaign by North Korean defectors and activists in the South, who regularly send inflatables containing anti-Pyongyang leaflets with food, medicine, money and USB sticks loaded with K-pop music videos and dramas across the border. India's election commission said on Monday a record-breaking 642 million voters cast their ballots in the general election that concluded on June 1 and dismissed opposition concerns over how the votes would be counted. The seven-phase vote, the world's largest, began on April 19 and was held in scorching summer heat in many parts of the country, with temperatures rising to nearly 50 degrees Celsius, 122 degrees Fahrenheit, in some north and northwestern regions. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is seeking a third consecutive term and his Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, led alliance is projected to win a big majority, TV exit polls said on Saturday, ahead of the counting on Tuesday. We have created a world record of 642 million proud Indian voters. This is a historic moment, Chief Election Commissioner Rajiv Kumar told reporters. 
Although the 2024 turnout is higher than the 612 million voters who cast their ballots in 2019, it is about one percentage point lower than the 67.4% turnout five years back. Turnout among 968 million registered voters was possibly lower in the initial phases because there was no single major issue to draw voters out in the heat, analysts said. Kumar said the vote counting process had been in place for decades and was very robust. All work will be done transparently. If someone still tries to do something wrong, strict action will be taken, he said. His comments on the vote counting process came a day after the opposition India Alliance, led by Rahul Gandhi's Congress party, urged the commission to follow norms during counting. The alliance of two dozen parties petitioned the commission, EC, to stick to its old system of completing counting postal votes before declaring results from votes cast in electronic voting machines, EVMs. Postal votes, which are paper ballots, are mostly cast by troops serving outside their home constituencies or officials away from home on election duty. This year, postal votes were also offered to voters over 85 years of age and people with disabilities to allow them to vote from home. Britain intends to begin deporting asylum seekers to Rwanda on July 24, a government lawyer said on Monday, although the hotly contested scheme is dependent on Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's Conservative Party winning the upcoming election. Sending asylum seekers who have arrived in Britain without permission to Rwanda is one of Sunak's flagship policies, but legal and parliamentary obstacles have meant it has never got off the ground. Sunak has said the deportation flights will not leave before the July 4 election but has promised if he wins they would begin soon after. The opposition Labour Party, leading by about 20 points in opinion polls, has pledged to scrap the plan if elected. In documents submitted to the London High Court as part of a challenge to the policy by Charity Asylum Aid, government lawyers said the intention was to effect removals with a flight to Rwanda on July 23, 2024, and not before. However, government lawyer Edward Brown later told the court that an operational update from the Home Office, Interior Ministry, said the first flight would in fact leave on July 24. The scheme, first drawn up by one of Sunak's predecessors, Boris Johnson, in 2022, aims to deter asylum seekers making the dangerous journey across the Channel in small boats from France. Last November, the UK Supreme Court declared the policy unlawful, prompting Sunak to sign a new treaty with the East African country and to pass new legislation to override this. Claudia Scheinbaum, a Nobel Prize-winning climate scientist, will become Mexico's first female president after winning a landslide election victory and promising to continue the work of her mentor and outgoing leader Andres Manuel López Obrador. Scheinbaum, 61, secured between 58.3% and 60.7% of votes, according to the INE Electoral Institute's rapid sample count released late Sunday night, the most support won by a candidate in a Mexican presidential election since the end of one-party rule in 2000. Accepting her victory, Scheinbaum thanked López Obrador, calling him an exceptional, unique man who has transformed Mexico for the better. López Obrador doubled the minimum wage, reduced poverty and oversaw a strengthening peso and low levels of unemployment, successes that made him incredibly popular and helped Scheinbaum to victory. But analysts believe Scheinbaum will find it difficult to follow in his footsteps. We made history. Scheinbaum told a crowd early Monday morning in the Zocalo Square in the heart of Mexico City. Her victory is a major step for Mexico a country known for its macho culture and home to the world's second biggest Roman Catholic population, which for years pushed more traditional values and roles for women. It's a historic moment, especially for women, said Arlene Rivera, a 24-year-old student, as she celebrated Scheinbaum's victory in the Zocalo Plaza. Mexican politics deserves more than what we have had in recent years. Main opposition rival, Xochitl Galvez, conceded defeat after mustering just 26.6% to 28.6% of votes, according to preliminary results. Scheinbaum, who will take office on October 1, is the first woman to win a general election in the United States, Mexico, or Canada. Mexico joins Latin American counterparts like Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Costa Rica, Honduras, Nicaragua and Panama, 
which have voted women to the highest office. China held its stance on three disputed islands in the Persian Gulf on Monday despite Tehran's anger at Beijing for describing the Iran-controlled islands as a matter to be resolved with the United Arab Emirates. In a statement last week, China expressed support for the efforts of the UAE to reach a peaceful solution to the issue of the islands, the Greater Tum, the Lesser Tum and Abu Musa. The islands, claimed by the UAE and Iran, have been held by Tehran since 1971. In a rare show of anger toward its biggest trading partner, the Iranian Foreign Ministry on Sunday summoned the Chinese ambassador to Iran to protest China's repeated support for the UAE's baseless claims. Considering the strategic cooperation between Tehran and Beijing, it is expected that the Chinese government will revise its stance on this matter, the Iranian Foreign Ministry said, opens new tab. China's foreign ministry on Monday repeated its call for Iran and the UAE to resolve their differences through dialogue and consultation, describing China's stance on the matter as consistent. The relevant contents of the China-UAE joint statement are consistent with China's position, said Mao Ning at a regular press briefing when asked about Iran's protest, offering no revision of Beijing's stance. She added that China and Iran had a strong relationship, and that China attached great importance to the development of their strategic partnership. China angered Iran in December 2022 when it issued a joint statement with Gulf Cooperation Council, GCC, countries that called for efforts to resolve the issue of the three islands. That statement went on to stress the need to ensure the peaceful nature of the Iranian nuclear program, which was not mentioned in the latest statement with the UAE. The recent news also ended our global news program. Thank you for your attention and follow-up. Please continue to accompany us on our journey to discover the world situation. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new information. Goodbye and see you again.